The third video in the partial fraction sequence involves quadratic factors that can sometimes appear and when you factor the denominator when you're decomposing a rational expression such as this one. Uh, we're going to go through that technique and eventually find the integral of 5 minus x squared over 3x cubed plus x dx. Let's take that rational expression from the problem and decompose it. The first video in the sequence or series of the partial fraction videos, we had a denominator that would factor, but it factored into two distinct linear factors x minus 3 and x minus 2 specifically. For this one, if you factor the denominator, you can factor out an x, but it's going to leave a 3x squared plus 1 as the other factor. When you write a separate fraction for each factor, one fraction gets an x, the other one gets the 3x squared plus 1. As long as your denominator is linear, the numerator is going to be a constant. It will be one power less. But if your denominator, and that, sec that last fraction, the denominator won't factor anymore using real numbers. Um, one step down from a quadratic, because it has a power of two, is linear. So we've got to build a linear numerator And that will have an x term and a constant. So if you ever run into a situation where you factor and one of your factors is a quadratic that can't be broken down any farther, specifically with a plus sign, then you'll have to build a linear numerator and it'll need an x term and a constant. If you multiply all the way through this equation using 3x cubed plus x or using its two factors that you see on the right side, what will remain is the numerator because the least common denominator is that first fraction's denominator. You get a clean cancellation. The middle fraction will have a 3x squared plus 1 remaining. because the x's will cancel, but the 3x squared plus 1 won't. And then finally, the last fraction, if you multiply through by a least common denominator, 3x squared plus 1 gets canceled, but a single x does not. Now, in the first video, we had distinct linear factors, and we chose x to be 3, and then we turned right around and chose x to be 2, because those two values of x let us zero out one block of terms, and it helped us solve a and b pretty easily. On this one, 0 is always a good choice if you can use it, and let's use it first. I'm going to highlight that equation right above in red because that's the one we're going to keep going back to. Letting x be 0, 5 minus 0 squared equals a times, plug 0 in for x in the middle set of parentheses, 3 times 0 squared plus 1. In the last part of the problem, b times 0 plus c times 0, all that goes to 0. So that gives us a equals 5. Now it's time to pick another value of x. We still have to solve for b and c, but because 
that fraction involving B and C doesn't have a real number solution. We just have to randomly pick another X. One's very easy to work with, so I'm going to choose that one. You can literally pick any number you like. Just try to keep them simple, something you can work with. Go back to the equation that's got the little red asterisk by it. 5 minus 1 squared equals A, which is 5, times 3 times 1 squared plus 1 plus B times 1 plus C. times 1. Every x in the equation marked with the red asterisk, plug a 1 in for every x you see. We can replace the a with 5 because we solved it just a, a minute ago. Okay, so where we're at at this point is 4 equals 5 times, in the parentheses, 1 squared is 1, times 3 is 3, plus 1 is 4. Progress forward, B times 1 plus C, that's B plus C, times 1 stays the same. Subtract 20 from both sides, and that gets us to B plus C has to have a sum of negative 16. Now, because we don't have a unique value, we've got to try one more value of x. And I'm going to rewrite the equation with the red asterisk by it. And then we'll try a number like negative 1 subbed in. And we may end up having to solve a system of equations. As a reminder, we had 5 minus x squared. Let me write that in black ink. That was equal to a times 3x squared plus 1. plus bx plus c times x. Okay, and on the previous slide, we subbed in a zero. That gave us a equals five. We subbed in a one, and that took us to b plus c equals negative 16. So let's take one more value. And just to keep it simple, I'm going to pick negative 1. Substituting into the equation right above, 5 minus negative 1 squared is 4. Don't forget your order of operations. We found a to be 5. 3 times negative 1 squared plus 1 plus b times negative 1 plus c times negative 1. It's very tedious, so take your time. Be careful. 4 equals 5 times, remember order of operations, so that's 3 times 1 plus 1, 4. b times negative 1 plus c, that's negative b plus c, times negative 1 changes your signs. So kind of think of it as distributing the negative 1 to negative b plus c. That gives us b minus c. Subtract 20 from both sides.
Okay, so that's kind of almost deja vu, except on the previous side we had b plus c was also equal to negative 16. If b plus c is equal to negative 16 and b minus c is 2, if we add these two equations together, again, it's like solving a system of equations, we get 2b, the c's cancel, equals negative 32 which gives us b equals negative 16. And if that's the case, then this line tells us that c is equal to zero. And so by solving that system of equations, we now have B and C. Also remember A is five. I'm gonna sketch that in right here on the end. A was five. So five minus X squared over 3x cubed plus x decomposed into 5 over x plus and that was our quadratic factor that couldn't be reduced all right, so let's recall it was bx plus c as that numerator. b was negative 16. c was 0. And so now when we go to the integrating part, And this was the very first slide. This was the original problem we wanted to integrate. The second fraction, the last one, negative 16x plus zero is negative 16. X over that quadratic denominator the first fraction we can rewrite that as 5 integral of 1 over x The second fraction, if I pull the 16 out front, it's almost a qualifier for natural log. The first integral definitely is the antiderivative one over x is natural log absolute value of x. So we have five natural log absolute value of x minus if there were a six in the numerator, the derivative of that denominator, the derivative of three x squared plus one is six x. It's totally fine to multiply in a six into that numerator to give you the derivative that you need, but you've got to keep it balanced so you take it right back out. Multiply six, 
multiply one sixth and it keeps it balanced out into the original value. So that gives us 16 over six is eight thirds. Now that we have derivative over original, we can do natural log of the denominator. And you can do that any time your numerator is the derivative of the denominator. 3x squared plus 1 is always positive, no matter what value of x you put in. If you were to graph 3x squared plus 1, you would get a graph that's a parabola that never hits the x-axis, and it never goes below the x-axis, so it's always positive. Absolute values are fine there, but if your terms can never be negative, you don't have to use absolute value, even though it's fine if you do. And there's our integral.